I thank the organizers for the opportunity to give this uh, uh, talk to uh, close this first part of the of the conference. Um, I, when I accepted uh, to give uh, to participate in the conference, it was uh, at the time it was still going to be a birthday conference for the sixth birthday of uh, uh, Jean Christophe, and. Uh, at that time, uh, I had the intention to talk about, uh, and I told uh, Silva that I would give a talk about uh, his work. And uh, now, uh, after uh, it, uh, it changed, uh, we uh, there is the, the it should be discussed at much more detail the work of Jean Christophe uh, tomorrow in a, an appropriate setting. So uh, I give uh, a normal. Uh, talk where I try to make some um, some connection with uh, what uh, with some theorem of him. Um, but uh, before uh, I will use a little bit of time to um, discuss how I well like uh, in many talks how I met him and uh, his influence uh, on me and the, the community here. Um, we. <coughs> I met him uh, first time in uh, in Rio. Uh, I don't know exactly when was this because uh, I was a master student at IMPA, and uh, at that time, uh, well, I was not didn't know anything about uh, dynamic consistency, and at the same time, he was a frequent visitor at IMPA. So uh, it was not going to be an uncommon situation that he would be just uh, in Rio, and uh, he would be a common. Um, site at, uh, at just uh, everywhere at IMPA or at uh, the parties that we had, the barbecues and so on. Uh, it took me to, the first time that I have a, a, a distinct recollection of watching a talk by him was on the other hand uh, in 99 on the uh, Brazilian um, colloquium. Uh, he gave uh, a talk about his work with uh, Jaco that uh, it to be discussed uh, in part uh, tomorrow. Uh, it was a work that took a long time. It was uh, very complicated. I got very little mathematically from the, the talk, if anything. Um, I, it was the first time that I heard him uh, speak in English. I remember uh, uh, my uh, difficulties to understand his, uh, well, I was not used to French, and uh, uh, his, his speaking English looked like he was speaking French actually at that time, so uh, I didn't, couldn't realize what, which language was it. Um, and soon after, uh, uh, I met, I had another opportunity, uh, uh, Wellington, my advisor, who uh, unfortunately in this sequence of bad events that we had uh, uh, in the past year, also left us in, um, in December, uh, soon after his uh, 70th birthday. He, uh, we, we were in our collaboration with uh, Michel Ljubic and uh, Wellington himself and so on. We, uh, in, in our paper, uh, it was, uh, we had not solved all problems, so it was the, the paper about um, uh, regular stochastic dynamics in, the, in analytic families of uh, unimodal maps at that time. That work that would be part of my thesis, it was, uh, we had some serious problems that were not solved. We had some partial progress and I wanted to kind of try to get ideas and expose what we had and uh, Wellington put me in front of uh, EOCOS for a very long seminar. And it was the first time that uh, um, I saw how was it to, to give a seminar in front of uh, Jean Christophe and particularly give a seminar about something that you didn't understand completely. So it was very, uh, complicated because he, he managed to um, uh, find out exactly the points that were kind of a little bit sore in, uh, in my understanding. So uh, he was, uh, it was my contact with his uh, rigor and um, which was at the same time, uh, I at first look at the too strict for me, uh, but uh, with time and learning uh, how to uh, to use it in the in the best possible ways, uh, I, I realized what was the role that it had in um, for everybody that would interact with him. So, in practice, for the years that uh, would follow, uh, 
the way uh, people would kind of uh, use uh, his uh, abilities and, uh, and uh, strictness and uh, would be to like, he would give, uh, basically if you could pass through him with your ideas and so on, you could be very confident that uh, it really worked. So uh, you, you were kind of unsure about something and uh, it would be, um, if you would agree that it is uh, whatever you were doing, it was a, a proof in his sense, then it's certainly uh, some valid argument. So it was something that was extremely important and very much uh, understood by the community, particularly here in Paris, uh, that uh, he had this kind of sort of role that uh, was um, a point of reference for, uh, for the kind of most difficult works being done in, uh, in dynamics. And uh, he would uh, share his, uh, so, so, but of course it was not only uh, rigor that uh, we got from him, uh, he, he came with many ideas and um, in many different directions and was uh, very accessible uh, to, to, to people that would come to him, so uh, he would uh, spend a lot of time uh, in his days at the Collège de France uh, receiving uh, visitors that would talk about the project and um, I, I have seen this because I, I was, uh, my, when I came to Paris, my first opportunity to work, it was him who gave it to me. He gave me, a, he opened a postdoc position in the Collège de France. So for two years, uh, I, I kind of followed a little bit of his uh, routine more closely and uh, could see people coming and uh, discussing with him their ideas. So usually, uh, sometimes some collaborators, like uh, often, uh, for instance, uh, Stefano uh, and uh, Pierre uh, would come and discuss with him, but uh, often it was just uh, some friends or uh, colleagues that would uh, be there trying to get ideas for their papers or trying to share what they had or explain where they were blocked, and uh, he would just talk to them, share their ideas, and uh, he would not become um, uh, kind of um, an author of the formal author of the paper. Uh, uh, so that's just an important thing to understand about uh, the impact uh, that he had in the community is very far from being measurable by the paper counting or uh, anything like this. It was much more extensive than that. And uh, it was by, by his questions being asked that he would ask in the seminars uh, the, that he was running, uh, especially after um, the death of uh, Michel Armand and uh, many other influences. So uh, I had the uh, uh, opportunity to collaborate with him a few years uh, after uh, I left the, my postdoc and um, I could, could enjoy uh, uh, and appreciate better uh, his style of doing math, which was kind of different from uh, what I was more used to uh, for me and for my uh, other co-authors often, and um, it was kind of always a big pleasure and uh, it was good to uh, kind of share other experience outside math with him and uh, there were many in, uh, in uh, for instance, um, during conference uh, as in uh, the Mita Gleffler and, uh, and also meeting him several times in, uh, in Brazil again. And uh, well, just uh, it's clear that uh, his absence will be felt just uh, by, uh, is, is being felt at this moment by the community uh, in Paris that's still not, uh, in dynamics particularly, that uh, still not uh, uh, adapted to not having him around, and uh, uh, more seriously by uh, all his friends in this situation. So, uh, thanks, I'm happy to, well, not happy, but, um, it is uh, an honor to be uh, allowed to speak uh, at this moment uh, uh, in his honor. Okay. So I chose a topic that is um, uh, well very close to me, and I try to talk about several related objects where the concept of uh, almost reducibility uh, plays a role. Some are better understood than others. Um, some uh, of the relevance uh, is still not clear. Uh, and uh, I start with the one that, uh, uh, with my first contact with the subject, 
and particularly, uh, and it is the one that I understand better, which is the case of cocycles. So, uh, first contact that I had with this notion was by uh, by reading, uh, uh, her, hearing about results of uh, Akan Eliasson. And uh, so let me show, put the, set, the setting, so they told me to write a pretty uh, large characters. But uh, so the topic is uh, cocycles. So basically, you can have uh, a dynamics on the circle. So I'm going to take a simple uh, quasi periodic cocycles, uh, the simplest kind. So you start with very simple dynamics on the circle which is just a translation. And on top of that, you construct some fiber dynamical system. So you have a, a, add a second variable that behaves, that moves uh, linearly, let us say. So the, there is some thing that depends just on the first coordinate that acts on the second coordinate. What's why you choose, uh, well, it, it can be, uh, so A of x here, let me introduce a setting. So x belongs to the circle. And um, here, the second variable will be acted by matrix, which uh, at this moment will be uh, SL2R matrix. Okay, and uh, you start with this simple dynamical system. Um, it can be seen uh, if you consider Y as an element of projective, so instead of uh, uh, looking at the linear action, you consider the projective action, you get some dynamics on the two torus. No, so you have the, uh, the circle times the projective, and then uh, you get uh, this two-dimensional dynamics, which is very simple in the first coordinate, slightly, uh, and there, there may be some nonlinearity in the second, but very uh, restricted. So the, you have this class of dynamical systems that have been um, studied a lot. And uh, to this kind of dynamics, uh, you can apply general theory of, uh, of a diffeomorphism of the torus, and in particular, there is um, a KM theorem. So KM theory would apply if uh, you start in a situation where, let's say, A of X is a rotation. So perhaps in some situation, the dynamics is just uh, here. It could be like Y plus beta. So you just have a translation of the two torus in a simple situation. And um, uh, KM theorem would apply to perturbations of the situation under certain conditions on alpha beta. So basically, this would be, uh, if you understand, uh, so alpha beta, just by general theory, would satisfy arithmetic condition. Condition, you'd have, um, uh, you can use KEM, so KEM becomes a good, uh, uh, allows to describe certain perturbations of this, uh, of this dynamic. So you start with this kind of very simple one, and then now you let this kind of get this more general form. And uh, one usual thing that you should be used would be that under certain circumstance, uh, this dynamical system, can be, you can change coordinates so that it can be seen just as another translation of, uh, with maybe the same alpha bet or, or, or with some other alpha prime, beta prime, also satisfying arithmetic conditions. There is a general theory about that, which uh, uh, you, uh, uh, as initially uh, worked out, it applies uh, in positive measure set of conditions. So to positive measure starts from uh, having initially alpha beta satisfying arithmetic condition, which defines some measurable set, not an open uh, class of conditions. And later on the perturbations, there are also some uh, conditions that must be satisfied. Um, so that's the general setting of KEM. And then uh, the theorem that I saw by, uh, 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 by Akan was uh, a version of this. So the, 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 the technique was KEM, uh, was of KEM style, but it was, the result was a little bit uh, different. So what had, uh, so he, he would assume that, um, uh, let's say, alpha satisfies arithmetic condition, which uh, we call the Diophantine condition. So, uh, So you, you have this condition like this, and now you assume that um, uh, A is not too nonlinear, so A is close to constant. 
So that's a basic condition on, of KM. And then um, uh, you, the, so, 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 so you assume already this. Uh, and then he concludes something that's very, uh, 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 so, so, so in the statement, so to, to, to make the statement, I, I need something to, to play a role of beta, but which is valid for any A. So what you can do here is that, of course, uh, in this uh, torus, you have all points are moving in the horizontal direction of speed alpha. And due to the fact that uh, you, you already have this kind of uh, uh, ordered behavior on the first coordinate, you can make sense of how the rotation happens in the second coordinate. So there's a well-defined as well uh, speed of rotation on the, on the second coordinate. So there is a, a so-called fibered rotation number. So for cycles, you can define a fibered rotation number. So you can define this. So it just measures the, the speed of rotation in the second coordinate. And the statement was that um, if beta, uh, ho, if ho satisfies some condition, again, so it looks kind of similar, which also arithmetic, which called some kind of Diophantine condition or rationality with respect to alpha, uh, then, um, then the cycle, which is this dynamical system, is reducible, which means that uh, I can change coordinates so that it becomes a, 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 it's put in kind of this constant form, so that uh, basically it is in, in general it, it, it's the, the form x goes to x plus alpha and y goes to a times y with some constant a this time. So, uh, so it looks like just a normal KM theorem, but uh, when you observe here, the condition that's part here is, um, uh, is not a, 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 there is a condition, and he also discussed the need that uh, you cannot get away to get this statement. Uh, you cannot get away from uh, putting some condition. Uh, so, but the condition here is, was a full measure condition. The difference is basically that when you do KM, uh, usually you say, so what's the, 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 the kind of condition that you have? It's like a, how appro approximation by uh, rational numbers. So you do, you estimate things, and this is kind of the, the, the shape of some Delphantine conditions. So to some exponent here. Okay, so that's here, and the conditions, like uh, you fix a uh, constant and you fix some r, and then you look at alphas that satisfy this. And this will specify uh, q alpha minus its big for every pq. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so you don't have very good approximate, uh, approximations of uh, birational numbers. So this specifies some full measure condition once, and then it, 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 this allows you to fix some kind of distance on which uh, uh, some, some kind of um, size of perturbations or that, that you're going to be able to apply your iterative scheme to get, um, to make the KM machinery work. And uh, the union of all, um, uh, the union of all alpha that satisfies such a condition gives the whole Diophantine class, but uh, you have to, f usually in the application of KM, you have to first specify, and then you, you are going to have some, per some, some, uh, some epsilon that will be, uh, will be allowed to perturb, and then, and then you continue. And here you don't have this, so you don't have the, the, pre the a priori specification of C and R. You can say, as long as you can find some C and some R, this kind of thing will work. And uh, what was, oh, oh, so it's just kind of strange uh, if you're used to the normal, it, it looked to me a little bit strange if you see the same game. So how it could work, this proof? What's going on is that uh, usual uh, KAM, what happens that you're going to do a series of conjugations and uh, that you're going to compose to try to get this kind of final conjugacy at the end. And the series of conjugations, this change of coordinates, they will 
converge to some kind of to this final change of coordinates. And you're going to need several conditions at each stage to be able to compute this change of coordinates, which will give uh, several moments that you're going to use this condition. And uh, what happens in this theorem is that uh, what he was doing is that he was always being able, no matter what, now without any condition on who, he he's able to kind of uh, produce and control the systems enough that he can make a change of coordinate. So he gets a series of change of coordinates always. So the, 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 his, his kind of scheme allows to get this change of coordinates that gets you closer and closer to a constant system. So what happens that uh, he, he changed coordinates here. So, so you have the original system that I write like alpha A of x. It can get a series of, uh, of chains that conjugates to systems of form, let's say, alpha A uh, uh, N of x. And these are getting closer and closer by, by, by some change of coordinates here, B N. They get closer and closer to constant here, to, to, to some constant. But what happens is that, in general, he cannot say that these B Ns are going to converge. His procedure at this level, so here it's converging, but here it could be diverging. Uh, and it's under this kind of, uh, just under this condition of the fiber rotation number that he, he can guarantee that, uh, that, that the BNs converge as well. So in a sense, he, uh, so, so, so one thing is that he gets always control about everything. Like uh, he is not able to prove that you are actually reducible just because it's not actually true but uh, he can tell you as much as it's possible about the system even when you don't know, when you don't satisfy a condition uh, for the fiber rotation number. So it's a very good understanding which uh, not only from positive measure to full measure, but I would say even it is to everything. Now everything falls into the analysis and you're not kind of discarding a priori anything. So it's a big um, conceptual advancement. And uh, the way that you can uh, think about, so, so, when, so, so let's give a name to this concept. So, so it was uh, given, uh, I don't know when the terminology got fixed, but uh, this kind of situation where this may diverge and this is converging to constants, we call uh, almost reducibility. So uh, how you want to think about this concept it's um, what are the almost reducible system? Uh, I like to think that, uh, suppose that I have some kind of technique that, uh, uh, which is like a, usually KEM, but uh, it's a perturbative technique. So I have something that's kind of applies close to constant with some unspecified uh, closeness like, uh, that, that you depend on several factors. But I know that uh, I have some bunch of techniques that work close to constant. So those are, uh, uh, this should be thought of as kind of KM uh, methods, even if they come with diff from different uh, kind of, uh, of argument. And you'd like to say over which systems those techniques and those estimates that I can get by, what, by those methods will be uh, applied. And uh, the, uh, the answer would be uh, the almost reducible systems. So you have almost reducible system, or the questions that, uh, that you ask normally, they are invariant by conjugation, right? So uh, if you can conjugate your system arbitrarily close to one that's a perturbative system, so to a perturbative situation, arbitrarily close to constant, so at some point you're going to be able to apply uh, whatever techniques and whatever estimates that are only available in principle in that direction. So uh, the class of almost reducible system specifies exactly the, 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 the reach of the domain of perturbative uh, uh, techniques. So it's something that's interesting to, to study in itself. And this theorem here says that sometimes this concept gives you some extra and nicer structure while the KM domain in principle, like if you specify it too much by, uh, by the convergence of the, uh, of the whatever algorithm you get and so on, specify some kind of uh, uh, maybe positive or full measure set, but still full with some holes there that miss some kind of uh, generic, uh, bare generic set and, uh, or something. So it, it, it's some kind of slightly ugly. We, we get used to it, but in principle, uh, at the start, it looks a little bit ugly. Now, you have such a theorem which is uh, valid 
in an, for an open set of conditions. Like, I forget about alpha at the moment, but alpha is specified, it, it still remains a, a whole class of dynamics. Like, you get an open set, you can talk about the different uh, A of X that you consider, and now you have a theorem that applies for an open set of, uh, of dynamical systems, and you can describe all this. So, he said that uh, with alpha specified, so let's see a, a corollary of this, uh, it, it, it can be stated by saying that, uh, uh, so, uh, a, a nice kind of statement that you get. So fix alpha, right? So uh, then uh, the set of A such that uh, alpha A is almost reducible. So the, I'm not specifying the, I, I should have done, but uh, this is uh, in analytic category, this theorem that I uh, mentioned. It's almost reduced. So that's a natural class to, to consider. And theorem of uh, Akan says that uh, this is open. Right? So there is all this uh, complex and so on. And then you get this very nice statement. So things get much cleaner. Uh, OK. So that's this. And then there is a, a whole bunch of developments around this. So kind of the one theorem that um, uh, I worked for, uh, for, for, for some long time to, to get, and in the end, uh, it uh, happens, what would be this statement here. So uh, that uh, sh shows that actually it's very nice, this class of almost, redu this notion of almost reducibility. You get some statement like this, basically, now more generally, alpha A such that, uh, uh, so the set of almost reducible alpha A this is uh, is open in uh, appropriate setting. So here is quasi periodic system. So it can allow alpha to change times uh, the other thing. So uh, it's a So you get this kind of statement that there's a stability, uh, so, so this stability property of uh, almost reducible system. So this domain of, uh, of KM becomes uh, an open set with respect to all natural parameters that uh, are under uh, consideration. Um, then you can get a little bit further, so, so how the, the theory progresses. Is uh, so 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 this gives you so what what's at the nature of here is that uh, this theorem is just uh, by saying that uh, the contact equivalent to that theorem, it's saying that uh, if a is close enough to constant, then alpha a is almost reducible for every uh, alpha. So there's no restriction on this. So it removes the, uh, all, all the Alphantine conditions. So that's the theorem that needs to be proven that has this implication. Um, and um, so this says that there is a neighborhood of constants that are under control. And then uh, what uh, the, the theory uh, progresses to see what's actually the reach of this uh, notion, the complete reach of this, what's the best statement that you can have, and, and so on. And in the end, uh, this led to the so to, to, to get a full understanding of what is, uh, can be uh, uh, understood in this, uh, of what's this open set. There was the progress towards the uh, almost reducibility conjecture. Ah, okay, so go do. So maybe there's an. So this almost reducibility conjecture, so I, I just wrote here, I, I continue. So I, I didn't mention, but um, the, not everything is actually, uh, 
almost reducible. So there are obstructions for that and um, a good uh, uh, initial dynamic understanding of uh, this kind of, was very well explained in, uh, in an important paper of Michel Hermann uh, on commentary in the beginning of 80s it's relating Lyapunov exponents. And so, so he was interested in KM theory applied to co-cycles and uh, he was also interested in Lyapunov exponents. So he has interesting things to, do, to say about both things. But anyway, th there is one concept here that says that, uh, uh, like just to, to mention quickly, uh, when you, you iterate uh, this co-cycle, the second coordinate keeps being acted by, uh, by, by matrix that get in principle more and more complicated. And after you iterate n times, you iterate n times, it gets some form that you translate in the first coordinate has just this format, and in the second you get some, uh, some new matrix. And it's possible that this matrix here, they have, uh, so, so this cosec has positive Lyapunov exponent, which means that these matrices have exponential growth. So uh, the Lyapunov exponent that's defined as this limit So this Lyapunov exponent could be positive. And uh, this kind of prevents, for instance, certainly to, to be conjugate to just a, a, a strict rotation. So that, 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 that creates all sorts of uh, obstructions to be able to have reducibility or anything. So you cannot conjugate it close to a constant rotation because systems close to a constant con rotation cannot have a large Lyapunov exponent. Uh, they have to be close to zero. And uh, if it can get arbitrarily close, it has to be zero. So, uh, so you have obstructions coming from the Lyapunov exponent. And it's true that there are co-cycles that are more complicated than just uniformly hyperbolic that, uh, that have a positive Lyapunov exponent, so-called non-uniformly hyperbolic co-cycles. That's uh, discussed, for instance, in this paper of Michel Hermann. Uh, <coughs> so, but, so what's the class of systems that are uh, almost reducible? So what the topic of that conjecture was to say that uh, all that you need to know is encoded on the Lyapunov exponent, right? So a necessary condition, if you exclude some kind of si simple systems that are uniformly hyperbolic, so that uh, uh, you certainly want to have Lyapunov exponent equals zero as a condition. Because if you're conjugating closer and closer to constant, let's just say, uh, elliptic matrix or parabolic, then the Lyapunov exponent has to be zero. But if you are almost reducible, so what does it mean? So uh, I didn't pay much attention to topology so far, but uh, uh, what does it mean that you have some change of coordinates? So change of coordinates uh, have the following form. So th this is a matrix. Uh, it's a map to SL2R. And what, if you work out the form of your change of coordinates, what, you need to, what you're computing, things like this, Bn of x plus alpha, A of x, Bx minus 1, this becomes the new matrix, uh, so this is a, a change of coordinate. This becomes a new matrix, and it's this that converts to a constant that you want. So you have to apply this. So you, try to, you have A of x, you try to find some B that makes this exactly equals constant. Uh, you don't get, you actually get a sequence that gets you closer and closer to constant. So the things that you want this to hold uh, in a, so this, have, uh, so, so this should hold, so since this analytic, maps, uh, the natural thing to ask is that this holds in a fixed neighborhood, in a fixed complex neighborhood of t. So you have this. And um, OK, so you, you have this. And what this makes is that, so, so this constant here has Lyapunov exponent zero, and this constant is constant in the neighborhood of the, of the circle. So in fact, all of this becomes, uh, 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 gets closer. So the Lyapunov exponent is not only zero when you look at real, uh, for the real variable, but also for, uh, for, for the complex variable, as long as it, uh, the imaginary part is not very large. So, so you have this, but not only for in the real, for in the real uh, circle, but uh, in, uh, complex neighborhood of this circle. So this is kind of necessary condition to be, to, to be in the almost reducible uh, 
setting. And the theorem that, uh, that was originally called almost risk conjecture now is a theorem. Uh, it is um, that this implies uh, almost reducibility. So as long as uh, you have the necessary control about the growth of matrices, that's enough to find changes of coordinates that brings you close to constant. Now, I don't want to discuss about uh, why this is, uh, in all details, why this is uh, so, so important, but uh, basically it becomes a basic technique to, to deal with all sorts of problems related to those cost cycles. And one, um, uh, I can, uh, so, so the, the original application uh, was to, to give uh, a proof that uh, in, a, in a very serious sense, you can split the, the co-cycles, like uh, one theorem uh, says that uh, um, it's in a very strong sense, the co-cycles with zero Lyapunov exponents that you find in one parameter families, which it's very natural to consider one parameter families of co-cycles here, in a typical one parameter family, they are all almost reducible. So all co-cycles with zero, so either you face the post and Lyapunov exponents and non-uniform probability, or you fit into the very nice almost reducibility situation. And this is true not only typically for co-cycles, but uh, for all co-cycles in a typical one parameter family. This plays a large role in the main application of co-cycles with it's the spectral theory of uh, of, a, of certain Schrodinger operators. So to do this, you need to understand a, a one parameter family. So anyway, there are those applications. There are applications about uh, uh, so-called um, uh, recent work that I have done with uh, uh, Jagong Yu and uh, Chizu, for instance, about the Dreiten Martini problem, which is a, a, a statement about so -called certain uh, version of Arnold Tongs or which come from the resonance in certain uh, co-cycles, which says that certain Arnold tongs, they don't uh, kind of close themselves uh, too prematurely and to make the analysis of the whole Arnold tongs. You, it's exactly a situation where there are several estimates that you come. The estimates that you need are very precise and they, uh, they can uh, be obtained using a sophisticated KM scheme that was prepared especially uh, for this. Uh, not for this, but uh, it, it was very much developed in this context of uh, co-cycles. Uh, but in order to apply them uh, in the largest possible range, you use a preliminary theorem saying that although it, it, through this whole range, you have some abstract uh, almost reducibility statement, you get somewhere close to constants, and then you apply the perturbative techniques, and then uh, you have uh, your theorem valid, and so on. So th th there is a, a certain amount of... Um, of applications. Okay, so this has, it is a theory that uh, is uh, well established and, uh, uh, and going. So let's see two different, uh, 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 so, so where else this kind of notions can be applied. So let me start with uh, uh, first one where I don't know, so let, let me mention then a uh, connection with some work of Jean Christophe, uh, which I don't know yet. Uh, uh, how it can be applied to solve some, uh, some conjectures, but it gives a very nice statement. So the theorem that uh, I'd like to uh, discuss uh, is related to, uh, so there's the book that uh, Jean Christophe, the asterisk of Jean Christophe, so we, we have two parts. So most people have seen this uh, important work. Uh, so the first part is about uh, 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 the linearization problem for quadratic polynomials and germs of uh, endolomorphic germs, uh, giving a full solution to the Ziegler problem. And, uh, the, but there is a second part, which is about uh, his work about groups of diffeomorphisms of the circle, uh, which has all sorts, if, if you go through this, you see all sorts of beautiful theorems. And uh, that, uh, that so, so he, he, push the theory so f uh, very far, and uh, later on probably people didn't think they could do much more than that, 
So somehow the, uh, maybe the, the theorems get kind of uh, hidden there because they, they appear. If you, have, if you don't complete the theory, people are kind of incentivate to write many papers and then cite you and, and use this work as kind of basis. But uh, if you basically close the theory, it becomes a kind of uh, a little bit kind of hidden from perspective. It's this case, but it's still kind of a lot of uh, in, uh, very interesting to read. And one theorem that you can find among the many others is uh, Basically, the theorem that says that uh, uh, is about conjugacy class. So he's, he's also interested in conjugacy classes of, um, of maps. So there is the theorem uh, that uh, he proved, so extending Hermann's theorems over here. So, so now the setting is, so you have different morphs of the circle, so f from t to t, which is, uh, so let's say, so it's orientation preserving different morphism. So, uh, it, it, uh, so it has a rotation number. So there's this notion of rotation number alpha. There is a manual cost theorem that says that if f, if alpha is diophantine, then uh, f is linearizable. So I'm assuming here, uh, I work on this infinite category here at first, linearizable. which means that f is conjugated uh, to x to the translation. So you have this. And um, so, but what happens if uh, alpha is not the alpha time? Then it's much more complicated. So the, 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 there are f that are not uh, linearizable. What is the, so the, 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 you don't have within this topological conjugacy class of maps with the same rotation number. You don't have a single smooth conjugacy class. You are going to be, have a complicated structure of um, all these kind of different smooth class that are kind of put together. But uh, I proved that uh, uh, the conjugacy class, so any, for any alpha, so fix alpha, Right? So you'd get some class, let's call A alpha of maps, which is a topological class, all maps that have this rotation number. And you see that uh, in A alpha, the conjugacy class, the smooth conjugacy class, of the rigid translation is dense. So anything, so, so any different morphisms can be approximated within the topological class by one that's smoothly conjugated to, uh, to rigid translation. Of course, this theorem is kind of immediate from the linear stability theorem in the case of Diophantine condition. And his work, his additional work is to prove this in the case of um, uh, alluvial, under alluvial condition, which he proves by a renormalization technique. And uh, this is sort of the opposite to what we're discussing here, because, like, not the opposite, but uh, uh, what we're discussing here, the concept of almost reducibility, is you start with, uh, with something and you try to conjugate it closer to a simpler uh, dynamic. So you, you'd rather take, uh, instead of approximating someone by someone that's in the class of a rotation, you'd like to conjugate your system to something that's close to a rotation. So it's the opposite. So uh, let's say, so you have f here, and you have a translation here, right? So this x goes to x plus alpha. Here you have f. So theorem that uh, you cause proof of is that there is some f tilde here that uh, is in the class of this uh, rotation. And theorems that you were discussing before is that there is some guy near here that's in the class of f. So it's you know, like, like this. So, um, so what you proved with, with uh, Rafael Krikorian was uh, exactly this kind of, uh, 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 this version here that's uh, uh, inspired by uh, Yoko's work and, uh, and his ideas and so on, but uh, putting, uh, uh, focusing on the almost reducibility problem. So the theorem says that uh, uh, any 
f uh, belonging to a alpha is so any alpha any f uh, is almost reducible or in another way the topological conjugacy class the, the smooth conjugacy class of f accumulates on constant but you get some kind of nicer statement because the, since the class of x of the translation accumulates on everything by your cost theorem so you can rephrase it by saying that the action the conjugacy action action by smooth conjugacies is minimal in A alpha. So all orbits are, uh, are going to be dense. So uh, that's the theorem that's a consequence of uh, the almost reducibility of F plus something that you know about translations, which is that uh, you can get closer to, uh, to anything. So this gives a nice uh, information about uh, this kind of uh, structure of this move class, some kind of additional information. Uh, it's always at this point, uh, and as I said, after all this work of uh, your cause and so on, it's difficult to uh, prove something new about uh, the, the, the diffios, so uh, we are happy when you can say, give some kind of nice statement like this that uh, was not known before. This theorem is proved by uh, renormalization techniques. I'm not going to get too much into, uh, not going to discuss this in to any detail, but uh, you have this. Let me mention, so I move to this move category. There is a, an interesting thing to mention here is that uh, uh, it's not only, uh, well, uh, why we didn't do it in the analytic category, it's harder because uh, uh, by the simple reason that it is false, this, this result. So that uh, should not be understood. There, there are some difficulties uh, that are kind of serious in this and then can be understood that uh, in the case of analytic maps, uh, let me, where is the, uh, yeah. Let me mention this, which allows me to talk about another theorem of your course. Let me mention. So, as you see, your course proved, uh, 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 like, uh, gave the optimal condition about linearizability, which was uh, following the work of Michel Hermant, who, who didn't give the Diophantine condition, but uh, he obtained it uh, later on. Uh, under the different condition, a condition for linear visibility that uh, cannot be improved in this move category. Then he proved something which was uh, 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 so optimal. There is an optimal condition. Condition for linear for analytic linear visibility. So, Ehrman found the optimal condition for analytic linear visibility by, uh, by definition. So, Ehrman at some point said there exists a condition H, which is uh, such that any uh, an, uh, analytic homomorphism of the circle is linearizable. So, that's a, a good definition. And uh, it is uh, an observation after you have some kind of preliminary terms that uh, 8 is not everything and so on. So there are a few things that you can say about this condition 8. You, of course, discover what is the exact arithmetic condition. So now if you have some information about the continued fraction of alpha, then uh, he tells you how, how to do this. Uh, unfortunately, the condition is very complicated. So the, the, there is some precise condition. I'm not going to, I don't remember it. And uh, 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 if I would write it, it would not be very helpful to, for, for anybody. But uh, uh, let me mention, what's the flavor of one condition? Let me mention another condition that's kind of very related to analytic problems is uh, uh, the Bruno condition, which is uh, like, uh, so you have the continued fraction approximants, Pn over Qn, and now you have the limb, so no, not limb, so you, now you consider this sum We do this. So, uh, so, so what matters here is some sort of exponential growth 
here, but uh, you, you want that, uh, that there's not too much exponential growth, that it goes to zero, and uh, in fact, that it goes to zero a little bit fast, but doesn't need to be too fast. So if this is less than infinity, this is so-called the Bruno condition. And it is what is important, for instance, in the, uh, for the, uh, the Ziegel problem. That's what gives the, 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 the linearizability of uh, germs, uh, Lomov germs. Uh, and it's important for analytic linearizability. So um, this is not the H condition, so H condition is more strict than that, but the Bruno condition, so B. So B is optimal condition for local analytic linearizability. So it means that if alpha is Bruno, and uh, F is close enough to, to, to translation, so the amount of closeness will depend on uh, precise alpha. But uh, so it, as long as you fix, fix alpha, now you go close enough to, to rotation, then this is linearizable. It's proved uh, by renormalization, for instance. And, um, and what he proved, uh, once he discovered what was the eight condition, uh, uh, it follows from his proof, maybe it's possible to do it a little bit simpler, is that uh, eight is strictly contained in B. Of course, eight is contained in B, but eight is strictly, uh, is different. Right? And now you see that uh, if H, so, so if you take now F, so, so if, if I'm saying that H is different from B, that this means that there exists in particular F, alpha belongs to H, and F belongs to A alpha. Uh, no, F belongs to B minus H. F belongs to A alpha, and F is not linearizable, analytically linearizable. Right? And uh, what can see is that in this case, F is not analytically, uh, C omega, let's say, almost reducible. Because if it was analytically, if it was almost reducible, then you could change coordinates and make it become closer and closer to constant. Right? Since it belongs to Bruno, uh, I can eventually apply the local theorem of your course and get uh, that it is in fact linearizable. So that's not possible. So you see that the problem in analytic category, uh, the notion of almost reducibility, well, so, so you can uh, invent the notion of almost reducibility, but this, uh, th there are things that are just not um, almost reducible. So, problem, so, so understanding of the, 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 what's the class of almost reducible uh, analytic uh, diffuse is something not completely understood, and uh, this puts a little bit perspective on the fact that this theorem has uh, uh, quite some content on the smooth case. So in the smooth case, it's true, um, but it's somewhat, some, somehow subtle. Okay, so, so we have this theorem, so it's just kind of a uh, nice theorem, and then uh, let me just, uh, how much? Okay, so I'm going to discuss quickly now one direction where Intermediate, so you have a complete theorem here. Uh, you have something here where you have some nice theorem, and uh, uh, maybe it's unclear how to proceed further. Uh, uh, there is now a, 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 setting, a setting where we have some uh, initial theorems, um, uh, also if Raphael, but uh, we don't know yet where we are going. So. Uh, so we, we like we even have a conjecture, but uh, we, we don't know how to prove it. Well, we know where, where we want to go, but uh, uh, have no idea how to get there. So we give problems to other people. Also. So it's a setting that I have found very interesting to work recently, um, which is uh, so you have a map, let us say of the disk, so you have F on the disk itself, right? A smooth map, or analytic, or whatever, fixing zero, let's say, 
or uh, sometimes I, I consider maps of the annulus fixing here. But uh, it you have it you have a single uh, periodic point. So zero is the only periodic point. So its orientation preserving here is the only periodic point. In this case here, the, there will be no periodic point, in fact, so the, I, I took out zero. I will assume as well that F is area preserving. So I call this uh, pseudo rotation. And you try, uh, we'd like to understand uh, the dynamics of pseudo rotations. And, uh, there are uh, several theorems here. Um, one theorem that uh, we are, uh, would like to understand is uh, uh, related directly to uh, KEM. So let's see. I believe that uh, should make a, a nice conjecture. So, so pseudo rotation has a uh, rotation number. So there's a well defined rotation number. Alpha, it's irrational. Okay, and a kind of theorem that uh, we would got like to that, that people a kind of conjecture that exists is that let's say if uh, alpha, so uh, let's assume f is move, if alpha is diophantine, right? Then um, in fact uh, this pseudo rotation, so if f is a pseudo rotation, a pseudo rotation. with rotation number alpha is, uh, is a translation up to conjugacy is a rotation. Model conjugacy. So that um, there is not uh, uh, much more flexibility of creating things which have a Diophantine rotation number. If you don't impose a condition uh, of Diophantine rotation number, a pseudo rotation can be much more complicated. A smooth pseudo rotation of the, of the disk or the annulus here can be, um, for instance, uh, weak mixing or, or, or things like this. So it's much more, uh, th there is a lot of freedom in the, in the Liouville case. But in the case of diophantine condition, where uh, there is KM theorem, so as long as you have diophantine condition, you're going to have some control about uh, uh, existence of uh, invariant curves and so on. But the question is near zero, for instance. But the question is kind of getting further away. And then you introduce some kind of a global condition, a control on the dynamics, which means that no periodic orbits appear. And then you get some complete control of the dynamics, theoretically. Okay, and this theorem, this kind of theorem, it's known in a perturbative context. So if you have, if you're close enough to, to constant. And uh, what we conjecture, so this is true uh, perturbatively. By KM. Um, conjecture would be that uh, pseudo rotations are almost reducible. We should so that's a, a setting where you have an application. If this conjecture is true, you use the local theorem, and then you get uh, this, uh, uh, th th this kind of nice rigidity theorem for pseudo rotations. Uh, so that would be nice to have. And uh, what we know to do, so we have progress in this direction, which somewhat analog to uh, one theorem that I stated before about cocycles, which was my earlier theorem about uh, saying that things close to 
constant are almost reducible for cost cycle, so the techniques are completely different. But um, so the theorem that we can prove with Havel is that uh, if f is so if f is close enough. to constant, to translation. So this can be stated for uh, in, in both settings. To a rotation, right? So that uh, to rotation. Then f is almost reducible. So this we have proved means that regarding this conjecture here, it's kind of that gives a little bit of uh, improvement, saying that is, so there is a constant condition, uh, there's the closeness condition that now is no longer dependent on alpha in the Diophantine condition, but it's kind of uniform in this whole class. But we don't think there's need for any condition, in fact. But, uh, but that's what we can prove so far. So we have this, uh, this theorem that uh, is proved Basically, by uh, uh, so, so there are several approaches. You can make a sequence of conjugacies. Probably the best way to, to look at this theorem is by, uh, by controls on the renormalization. And unfortunately, to have control on the renormalization, you start assuming that you are not too far from, from a constant, and then you renormalize, and you, you guarantee that this condition is still satisfied. But what is, 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 so this, can, this is an approach general uh, even for uh, alternative to KEM and so on. So what's new here is to be able to make, so, so the situations like uh, you have this kind of map and you have this dynamics and how to uh, kind of manage to do a renormalization procedure with some control, assuming that you don't have too much nonlinearity or nonlinearity bounded by let's say one over 10 or whatever. It's not a, a, a extremely small, but it's kind of, uh, it's kind of still bounded by one over 10. So you have this, suppose this condition, and, uh, but now uh, uh, you, you don't have much assumption on alpha, so the, the bad situation is not alpha, you assume that's extremely close to zero. Right, so you're just translating a little bit, and to renormalize you have to, of course, iterate by more or less one over alpha to make the first renormalization, right? So. Uh, uh, in this situation, uh, you're going to iterate a long time, and uh, in principle, you, could lo uh, you should lose control. And somehow, uh, uh, we managed to make some uh, vector field approximation of these dynamics by using uh, so-called uh, an, uh, an a priori estimate that uh, uh, comes from uh, for, for, for some general reasoning, uh, which uh, kind of exposed in a paper uh, uh, with... Um, so it's my paper with, so let's, since there are many authors, I, I write here. For, for, so, uh, so now, so it's with uh, Bassan and uh, Patrice. And uh, now how? Uh, Sheng Shu and uh, Ziyuan Zhang. So there is this theorem that, uh, 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 that contains a, a kind of nice analysis about uh, showing that uh, analytic diffeomorphism of the disk uh, uh, m m uh, volume preserving cannot be uh, mixing, so there is an a theorem of independent uh, or some other theorem, but there is some discussion here uh, which is closer to, the, to, to here because you quickly get into the setting of pseudo rotations. And the point here is that there is an estimate that says that uh, if alpha uh, uh, so, so it's interesting estimate when alpha is small that says that uh, if you have a pseudo rotation, so no period curves appear with rotation number alpha, then you have an estimate here that you have a disk and uh, and you have a, 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 a small disk here. And uh, uh, let's assume that uh, this small disk um, doesn't intersect itself by one iterate. It's a very simple thing. 
So that's by f. So it's in the case here. Then the area of the disk is, uh, is smaller than alpha. I think that's correct. That's it. So it says that if, uh, if, so, so if this uh, rotation number is very small, then the only way that you don't intersect is by taking a, 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 an extremely small disk. So this limits the, 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 the fact that things have to go, come closer together uh, under iterations. Alpha is small, and this is uniform here for all disks. And this is what uh, comes in to, to make an analysis of the vector field approximation and a little bit about the dynamics of the vector field. This allows you to, uh, to control this, this iterate and do a first normalization. And then uh, uh, you, you get in the setup that this can be continued. Uh, the, the analysis is kind of not very easy, but there, there, here, I just wanted to mention one additional ingre, the ingredient that appears. So this, this is true in general, right? What's additional is like just to make the initial vector field approximation, you, you, you need also to assume that things were not too large to begin with. So this is unfortunate and we don't know. But uh, we, we kind of believe really that the conjecture is true. And uh, you see that uh, it, gives, it should give a very nice uh, description of this whole setting of pseudo rotations. And anyway, it was basically an advertisement for this notion of uh, almost reducibility and uh, I hope that uh, it will uh, appear in other contexts as well and be applied in, uh, to some good use.